This might be of an interest, and I'm sure most of you know about the MBC roadmap. Most of you have read it. So what this presentation will look at is ultimately where we are in that respect, what milestones we've hit, what we've missed, and what we need to potentially do to get to the next level. So first of all, the BIM in Ireland 2019 report is now available. This is a joint effort commissioned by the Construction TI Lines, a partnership with the School of Multidisciplinary Technologies, School of Suffrain and Construction Management, TU Dublin, as well as with Trinity College. So we released the report in 2017, and with this report is a complete update of where we are. So I think Sue has a few hard copies out there. I'm not too sure if she's dispensing them, but it'll be up online for free in the next day. And what we look at in here is the context and challenges, the importance of digitization, learning from others, as well as BIM in Ireland and BIM maturity in Ireland. So what this presentation ultimately will do will give an overview of this document and lead to the conclusions that we've made. So actually, uh, do you know, I'll pass. Thank you. So a number of recent publications, the Expert Group of Future Skills, Engineers Ireland State Report, Construction Sector and Performance, Action Plan for Jobs, all put prefabrication, BIM, Internet of Things, digitization at the core of centre in regards to helping change in the industry, making it more attractive, and trying to help with particular problems such as jobs, lack of infrastructure, and meeting tight deadlines. So this is nothing new. It's been at the forefront for a long time. There's reports below there that are pre-2018 going back to 2015. So we've heard this story. And in 2017, we made quite an advancement. And the reason for that is that we had a number of different initiatives, such as the NBC roadmap, the announcement for the government of a digital strategy. So we hit some key targets in 2017, but it's two years later. Where are we now? Have we advanced as an industry? Have we gone backwards? So let's have a look. And the way that we did this is through this macro maturity models. And what this does is looks at five key areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at each one of these individually, and then I'm going to default back how this is relevant. We also, as part of the BIM and Ireland report, we did a number of different initiatives in partnership with this to help in order to kind of further validate the results. So I'd like to think, being the academic, that my work is quite kind of a stringent, but you know, it's, it's up to the bay if anyone wants to come and challenge it. So the fourth model, we'll actually have 2017 to 2018. The fourth model, seeks to examine the extent of BIM diffusion across markets. So what we're looking at here is where we are in regards to modelling, collaboration, integration, and in that aspect, technologies, processes, and policies. So what we found, though, is that we've actually made an improvement in this area across technology when it comes to processes, and technology when it comes to policy. So we're moving it in the correct direction. However, there are still some issues. Some of the reasons that we've improved are, as I said before, those three documents. The reason why we've included standards and policies is because of the roadmap, because of the digital construction announcement, and more importantly, because ISO has come in. ISO has helped on the back of PADS 1192 keep us structured. So we have improved in that particular aspect, and we should improve moving forward with the NSI releasing their certification in line with ISO. So in regards to that model, we're not doing too bad. We have made a bit of a jump, but if we go back again, you know, the figures aren't wonderful either. Policies are 25%, collaboration 27 So there's an awful lot of room for improvement. Look, small victories. It's better than what it was in 2017. The next model assesses the maturity of countries using a comparative matrix or granularity using component-specific matrix. So to break that down, what this looks at are key areas. What are we like when it comes to objectives and milestones? What are champions and drivers like? regularly frameworks, noteworthy publications, where are we in the learning and education, measurements and benchmarks, standardised parts and technology. So if we look at this compared to 2017, we can see that the largest growth has come with objectives and milestones, framework and noteworthy publication. This once it goes down to the roadmap and the digital construction. Now what I found out when I asked companies about the roadmap, because it's not all 
great news. We'll get to the kind of the crux of the presentation near the end, and you'll see exactly where we are in each pillar. But what they are saying is that they are using it as a guide to help inform, uh, I suppose, senior management, as well as set benchmarks and frameworks to assist with them on their journey in regard to implementing BIM. A number of figures have not significantly grown, they remain stable. And what this will come back to as well is that there's no funding available. So this is stagnation here in figures because there is no money going in to the roadmap. There's no money going in to the advancement of this agenda. And if we look at where we are 2019, I promise you by 2021, it'll be complete stagnation. Ireland's technology and infrastructure continues to attract in foreign investments. Project Ireland 2040 is firmly places in the eyes of everyone. And learning education remains strong with ongoing commitments to digital construction. In regards to learning uh, education, we can see in here that in 2017, the education was quite advanced, but within this, we've actually started to offer even more. We're starting to integrate modules across uh, undergraduate degrees. We're starting to look at integrated projects uh, across multiple kind of like civil engineering, quantity surveying, architectural technology, and we can see that a number of courses are now starting to target postgraduate, undergraduate. So if you compare this to 2017 to 2020, there's a significant jump in here. One of the key things as well is a number of research initiatives come out. And a number of these being funded through Horizon 2020. So Horizon 2020 has seen that there's an issue with skills gap, mainly in the area of sustainability, and we targeted a number of different agenda. So I'll be giving a presentation on the Horizon 2020 BIMSER project later on today. So drop in and we'll be explaining how we've created a platform based on micro accreditation and modules that can be used to upskill the supply chain in the area of sustainability in BIM. Limerick IT is involved in the Horizon 2020 BIM set project. This is looking at how to use BIM in partnership with Carbon Neutral Zero. GMIT are leading the National Forum for the Enhancement of Teaching and Learning. UCC is using a BIM based toolkit to help with BIM fabrication projects. DCU is looking at getting a postdoctoral scholar, getting him into Dublin City Council and seeing how they can start moving the paper based or the current digital even further down, maybe into the local IFC. And there's also initiatives going on with UCD as well as TU Dublin looking at the area of blockchain, geomatics, and framework. So we're quite uh, doing a lot of PhD projects in this particular area. So you can see in the research, based in 2017, 2019, there's been quite a big jump and there's been a number of projects which have been commissioned on the back of BIM. So here's an interesting one. What does this mean? Okay. So let me go back actually a second. This looks at who's leading. Is it coming from the top down, the bottom up, or the middle out? Is government leading? Is it mean maybe coming from the bottom up or the middle? So what does the middle mean? Well, the middle means that the same as 2019, the main drivers in this are the large contractors. And that's what this is saying. It's saying that the main leaders are the large contractors. So large organisations, the industry associations, are pushing the BIM agenda. The government has not provided strategic funding to date, so we're still looking towards the educational centres and still looking towards large contractors who are then responsible for upskilling back into their supply chain. And as well as unless adequate funding is provided, we could further alienate the SMEs from this agenda. So something has to give. There has to be some form of funding. Or there has to be some kind of initiative to help the SMEs get in line with this because there is an expense to it, even though you know, we're all here and we understand that the benefits completely outweigh the cost over time. But still for an SME, it's quite significant of an overhead in order to get involved. This model here looks at, identifies, assesses, and compares the action policies that make or take or can take facility market-wide adoption. So it kind of looks at, particularly at the government. And in all fairness, we're looking at 2017, we had a really passive government. Make aware, it encouraged, and it observed. We're actually moving to a government now that's educating, encourage, and observe. But the UK government would be more assertive. They'd be prescribe, enforce, control. So you'd be kind of looking at a nice mix across all three areas. Even though we are looking at a more assertive government, and that's mainly based on the CSG, uh, the construction sector group. And this is a group set up in order that we feed our concerns to them, and they will feed back then to the higher powers. And they are further in charge of feeding back the, the BIM agenda and making to the powers to be an understanding of where we need to go with it. They have improved since 2017, but there is a slight induction, uh, reduction in incentivization despite an increase in training. So more training available, but for example, 
there's no incentivisation for SMEs to get involved in the project, and that's still a system of the alienation, and that goes back to the other models, so they're all linked. And then these figures will be predicted to decrease or stagnate if the government fails to provide the industry with more encouragement and support for the adoption of BIM. So this is, in my opinion, this is what the data is saying. The mo this final model, and then once we get through this model, we get on to what this means for the roadmap. But we have to understand how I got this data so I can make the assumptions that I'm going to put forward about where we are in the roadmap. <coughs> this model assesses and compares the roles played by different stakeholders in facilitating diffusion within and across markets. So this looks at who are the key champions when it comes to technology, key champions when it comes to professional institutes and practice, and key champions when it comes to policy. So, in 2017, the technology developers were seen as the most influential technology players. However, developers, service providers, and advocates are now seen as co-leaders in this space. For policymakers, the educational institutes continue to have a much higher BIM infusion compared to policymakers. So policymakers, despite in this area producing the digital strategy and feeding into the roadmap, have actually dropped when it comes to influence in that particular area meaning that the education institutes are still being seen as the ones that are kind of driving in this space. The survey shows a significant drop in policymakers, and finally, construction organisations are seen as key process players. So however industry associations and communities of practice are also ranked highly. So, why, the reason why we're all here? Uh, actually, yeah, one of the things that we set up this year was the BIM Umbrella Forum, and the whole idea with this is that we had all the professional institutes feeding in to this umbrella forum. We created a kind of a holistic environment and got all the subcommittees and the all, we all met maybe once every two months. And what I did was I took an agenda, I took feedback and I was able to communicate and see events, what each one of us is doing, just kind of give a bigger picture in this space. And in all fairness, the professional institutes are doing some fabulous work. The ROI have released uh, BIM protocols. The CIF have a number of important kind of starter packs. NSI have moved towards uh, certification. They also are in the ISO space. They have people attending SEND meetings. Uh, so there's a lot going on with the professional institutes, and they're all driving quite significantly. In it. The SSI now are working with the RII to review the BIM, uh, RIA BIM template pack, and that has been a significant influence this year, the release of those documents. So within this report that we have here, there's an update in every single BIM subcommittee, so it'll give you an idea on your particular area what's going on. So here we have the roadmap. So in the roadmap we have four key pillars. Leadership, standards, education, procurement. So in each one of these we had an agenda from 2017 to 2021. We're two years into it. A number of milestones have to be hit and a number of milestones need to be further hit in the next two years. So let's have a look exactly where we are. Let's start off with our leadership pillar. In a recent MBS survey, it's reported that 76% of respondents have adopted BIM. So ultimately in the leadership, while the government is not providing it, the industry is driving on. The industry is maturing, it is advancing, and despite the funding from government, we are still driving on in that particular regard. Macro models say leadership is presented by construction organisations, professional institutes, and tour level education sectors. So they all get it and they're all driving it forward. Despite no strategic funding being provided to date for the government, some public sector organisations, such as the Public Sector BIM, which is a very important group, which involves a group of a number of different public sector bodies come together, and they feed into the CSG, and they're pushing this agenda as well. So a lot of the subcommittees are doing a lot of very strong work. And a collective consortium of industry bodies have also presented their findings to the CSG on a roadmap for what serves as a centre of excellence. So part of the roadmap is a recommendation for a centre of excellence. And within the Centre of Excellence, BIM will be housed along with digital and other innovations. We've made no progress in that regard, but the CSG have put forward their recommendations on it. I also have a paper in the gathering. Uh, if you get a chance, have a look at reading. I didn't get a chance to put a slide in, but it looks at what a generic, based on looking across a number of different industry bodies, different globes, to have set up similar digital inf innovation centres, what would the key teams be that we should target. So where are we at standards? Standards is actually quite impressive. The NSI have now developed a BIM certification program. We are in the middle of developing our national annex, which will be part of the ISO 9650. We have ongoing release of templates and guidance documents such as our BIM pack. We have three Irish BIM experts attend SEND meetings. 
Funding has been made available for a postdoctoral scholar, scholar at DCU, as explained for IFC. Uh, we haven't developed online tools and supports to help implement national tools. This hasn't been progressed yet. So that's a key one, but in all fairness, some of the work that's going on in standards is quite impressive, and I think, in my opinion, it's probably one of the leading pillars. Education and training pillar. It continues to be seen as the primary entity for upskilling. I showed you the, the courses there earlier. You can see, if you compare to 2017, the significant jump in this particular area. And that's because they get it and they're responding to the skills gap and the need to educate. Professional institutes also continue to upskill. Organisations such as CETA continue to provide fabulous events like this today. To tire the skills shortage at its core, it's recommended by the authors of this piece to explore international initiatives such as Class of Your Own and the BIM E Craft. These are fantastic. Class of Your Own is about how they integrate construction into the secondary school curriculum and BIM craft is how they're going to get in primary school's kids and secondary school early into using BIM by marrying it with something like BIM craft. Uh, yeah, Minecraft, sorry, Minecraft. Uh, present the National BIM Education Task Force has not been established and development of an online BIM self-assessment tool for companies at a base level of learning outcomes targeted NFQ levels have not been progressed. So those two have not been progressed whatsoever. And finally, procurement pillar. So procurement process of the phase BIM mandate for public work projects is on schedule to commence Q2 2019. There is no support or refuse of the current contracts in order to kind of assist these. And concerning maturity, despite rising in this area, benchmarks and processes may stagnate unless clear direction is provided. So the final slide, conclusions. Ireland has shown a steady increase in some aspects of BIM maturity since 2017. The sector has, by default, led in the execution parts of the roadmap, and in doing so has achieved a number of significant targets. So, in all fairness from the industry, it really continues to drive on, despite funding or not. There are still many vital objectives that will need funding if the key aims of the roadmap are to be achieved. We find ourselves now at a crossroads, in my opinion, with a push for government required to advance the BIM maturity within industry. If not, I'm back up here in two years, and I reapply this, I have a feeling that we're either going to regress or be completely the same. And the industry cannot afford to stay static. We must advance in line with other global jurisdictions in order to maintain our competitiveness and our edge. Thank you. Thank you.